the way he wanted to do. Cain only complained of his punishment but never repented. But the good news is this today, that Abel came to God on God's terms and was accepted. <laughs> I want you to imagine what it must have been like growing up in the household of Adam and Eve, right? Can you imagine that? <laughs> Not a lot of neighbors. <laughs> Just saying, you know. <laughs> they would have sat there and talked to their kids probably about the Garden of Eden and how they had made a mistake and sinned against God and ate of the fruit and Dad would now come home with the sweat of his brow. Hello, do I got any men that know what I'm talking about? You come home and you're tired. You've worked hard. And, and mom would talk about the pain of childbirth and that all of this had to do with the fact that they had sinned against God. And, and they no doubt had talked to, the, to their children about the necessity when they come before God to have a covering that, uh, of a tunic like God had made. And the whole family knew that the wages of sin was death. But God in his mercy had begun something even with Adam and Eve that's so beautiful. It's called, in theological terms, it's called the substitutionary atonement. Abel knew that to go before God, it required a lamb. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful that out of the parking lot today, we don't have a number of lambs that are gonna, we're going to bring in and sacrifice. Aren't you grateful for that? Come on. Yeah. I'm so Amen. grateful for that. Amen. You know why we don't need a lamb? Because the perfect lamb, amen, the lamb of God, Jesus Christ, has already died for us. His blood has already been spilled. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 says this, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. With that, the NIV says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And when it says the shedding of blood, it's more than just, you know, getting a cut. Otherwise, Jesus would have just had to have a little cut and bleed a little bit, and that would have been enough. When it says shedding of blood, it really means death. Because why? Why is that? Because the wages of sin is death. And when Adam began to talk to the Lord, God said to Adam, he said, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, what will happen? You shall surely die. Adam died spiritually the day he, he, he ate of the fruit. He had separation from God. Later on, he experienced physical death. Hello. And if you're reading Genesis chapter 5, it's fascinating if you've ever read the next chapter. It tells this man lived this many years, and then what he says, and he died, and he died, and he died, and he died. The wages of sin is death. And some would say, well, why is the punishment for sin so serious, Pastor Bob? Isn't death just a little bit over the top? And here's the, here's the thing, you know, it, 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 sin isn't just a few silly things that we've done before God that can be ignored. Sin is rebellion against God. It's so serious because the greatness of the one we are rebelling against. Now, in most countries, the severity of the crime depends upon not just your actions, but who you're committing the crime against. If you're in the UK and you hit somebody, right, that's a common assault. If you hit, what do they call those guys with the little hats, the Bobby, the policemen? You know, that's a higher offense. You probably spend more time in jail, but how many know if you hit the queen, you're gonna be in jail for a long time, hello? Am I right on that? The seriousness of the offense depends upon the one to whom it is against. And God is the one who made us and gave us life and continues to give us life and breath each moment. He's our creator. Years ago, if someone committed treason against their government or their king, the penalty would have been, the death would have been given. How much more then if each one of us had rebelled against the one who made us and enables us to exist? Is this not a treasonous act? worthy of death, the death penalty. Yeah. But the good news is this, that God has chosen, God has chosen to allow the blood of his son to come and to pay that price. That should have been our penalty. Yeah. You know, I've never noticed this before in scripture, before this week, and I want to preach a sermon on this one. <laughs> it's so powerful. The power of the lamb, it just like it just increases. Abel offered a lamb to God for one person. One lamb for one person. As you go through scripture, all of a sudden what you discover 
is that the next thing you see, the children of, Egypt, of Israel in Egypt, they offered one lamb, guess what, for one family, right? And then as you go a little bit further, the nation of Israel, they offered one lamb once a year for the entire nation of Israel. And then you get to the perfect lamb, the blessed lamb, come on, our Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, hello? And it was one lamb for the sin of the entire world. Come on, somebody. I'm just here today to tell you that there's still power in the blood of Jesus. There's still power in the lamb. Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful today for all God has done. Amen. Why don't you stand with me today? Thank you for just letting me share this morning. Amen. Amen. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper today. And I'm so grateful today to be able to have communion with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. There's coming a day in the near future, I believe, when you and I will stand in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will partake of the Lord's Supper together with him. Hallelujah. Aren't you grateful for that? Amen. Is there anybody that's grateful for the blood of Jesus? Yes. For all the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I just want to thank the Lord for the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, Abel offered that excellent sacrifice to the Lord. And the scripture says that God said that he was righteous. And let me tell you, Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice, given of his blood and of his body to the Lord. He gave himself. And when we trust in him, God imputes his righteousness to us. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper today. But first, I just want us to sing this old hymn to the Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Would you just join me? Let's worship the Lord for a moment. 